Hey folks, Bill here, Whirly Bird Video Productions. We're out at the garage today, getting ready for spring. I actually went and traded off my Class A camper that I had. I had a big bus uh, that I went around to all the flines and stuff in. And I was wanting to be able to, you know, actually go somewhere once I got to the flying. And in the past, I've, you know, pulled my trailer with my Class A. And then when you get out there and set the campsite up, you really don't want to tear down just to drive the town and back. So I was kind of wanting to get it to a travel trailer. So I went out and traded for a travel trailer. Uh, so now I'll have to put my helicopters and things in the travel trailer and pull it behind my expedition. Uh, so at least I'll be able to, you know, unhook and have a vehicle wherever I'm going. The travel trailer, though, does, they don't have uh, generators on board if you go buy. Maybe if you can special order that way, but uh, if you go out and purchase one, I went and traded it in, and uh, you have to have a generator. So I've got my little Honda 2000 watt generator, and of course I can run a few things, you know, the refrigerator, that kind of thing, off of this, charge the battery, that kind of thing. So I'll probably use that some, but I also wanted to get a big generator and run the air conditioning. And of course, just went out and bought the new travel trailer, you know, it's a big chunk of change, so I couldn't really go out and spend another three grand on a Yamaha 4000 watt generator. So I ended up looking around, I found some pretty good reviews on this uh, Champion uh, 4,000 watt generator. This thing has a remote start and electric start and it has a little key fob that you can start the generator from So I think that's pretty cool You know, I can put this outside move it away from the camper a little ways to, to even deaden the sound even better It rates a 68 decibel um, Rating for, for its loudness and I checked that with my decibel meter and from about 20 to 30 feet away That's what you're getting about 68 to 70 decibels so I guess that's where they rated at 68 or 70 decibels. Standing right up on it, I'm getting right at 80 decibels, a little over 80 decibels. So it's not crazy loud, but it is a lot louder than the Hondas and the Yamahas that are three grand. So I guess we'll get to find out, you know, if its quality stands up. But I'm thinking if I can make this thing last three or four seasons for $425, heck yeah. So I got it through Amazon, um, actually Amazon Prime for $425. $25. Um, so that uh, worked out. Didn't have to pay shipping, didn't have to pay tax, but that, that was a good deal. I also seen several folks on them that had them on there for around $425 that weren't prime rated that you had to pay shipping for for around 60 something dollars. Uh, the guy that had this for prime only had two left. It wasn't fulfilled through Amazon, uh, but it was prime eligible. So I went that route. So I wanted to show the remote start and a little key fob. I actually have it here in my pocket. It's a little key fob's pretty neat. It's got a start and a stop. Uh, it's got cold start technology, what they call cold start technology. What that means is when you use the remote control, it's an all automated start. So when I hit start, it chokes it, prepares it to start, actually does the start and the run up, and allows it to run up to speed and RPM, and then it turns the electricity on. That way you don't have an increase or decrease in hertz as your electricity comes on, which can be damaging to some electronics. Uh, so that that's really was important to me when I was purchasing. And also when you shut it off, when you shut it off, it turns the electricity off immediately and then shuts the motor off. So that way it keeps that hertz level and your volt level uh, maintained until suddenly nothing. So it works really, really well like that. So I'm going to back up, start it up here, and let you guys listen to it. So the little key fob here, it takes just a second, but when you push start, and then when you stop it, it takes a lot, little bit longer for the cold start to shut down just because it wants to allow that electricity to show, to, to turn off. Uh, I tested this at about 25 or 30 feet away and it works. I also went inside the camper and started it uh, and stopped it. It works anywhere inside the camper with the generator setting 10 or 15 feet away. It worked fine. Uh, so again, it uh, seems to be pretty good. I guess we'll see by the end of the summer if the thing's still running or if it's blowed up. Uh, one thing about the uh, cold start and the stop, uh, again, it just takes a little while when you turn it off. Uh, to, to shut the electric down and then come back on. But while it's running, it actually charges your little starter battery. 
Uh, so that's good. It keeps your little starter battery charged. Now, one thing it did say in the manual, not to leave this on off switch, which actually enables the cold start to, and stop with the remote, not to leave that on for a long period of time or it will run the battery down if it's just setting and not running. Uh, so I wonder what that means, really. Uh, I'm hoping, you know, the idea is at night before I go to bed, I can flip that on. And that way, when I get up in the morning at six o'clock and want to make coffee, all I got to do is push that button and start it up. I don't have to go outside and get it started and that kind of thing. So we'll try it. We'll see how that works. And then I'll let you guys know by the end of next summer, if you see me with a Yamaha generator setting here, you know, this didn't work. Uh, but so far, I think it uh, looks like it's uh, going to work pretty good. I put a little bit of load on it earlier and ran one of my uh, power supplies that uh, charge with it's an 1100 watt power supply so i was you know not pulling nowhere near 1100 watts i was probably pulling 800 watts and it really didn't even know it was there so uh, we'll uh, pull it out and get this thing hooked up at some point and hook it up to the camper and try the air conditioning and that kind of thing but really with the uh, 3500 watts continuous is what this is supposed to be pulling i should be fine you know that air conditioner is probably going to pull 800 watts to start and then it'll probably back down to around four to 500 watts, I would think. But we'll try it and see. I got a watt meter, so I'll, I'll see how that's doing. Anyway, uh, thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you next time. Big rate and subscribe. Thumbs up. We'll see you next time on Early Bird Videos.